Hello, this is Dean Banerjee, and today we're going to talk about designing with the National Clock Design Tool. This is actually the simulation screen, which is also used for the design. To get to the screen, you have to go and choose a part. We've actually already discussed this in a previous video, so if there's any questions about that, be sure to visit some of the other previous videos on getting started and choosing a part. So once we get to this screen, we see that we have several things. We have each block, the blue blocks represent integrated blocks in our chip. You see the yellow blocks means that it's some external component. In this case the loop filter is white which is actually partially integrated on our thing. You'll see that there's different icons like this icon here is the phase noise icon. So you can simulate the phase noise as it would look at the output of each block. You also see that you can have blocks enabled or disabled. In this case I have to enter in a frequency. So I can enter a frequency. You'll notice that when I entered 300 I actually got 307.2 so it's trying to adjust the frequencies to make it work with the dividers. So now I can view the phase noise if it's enabled or I can disable that. You know, For instance if I said go to 1200 megahertz it corrects it to 1228.8. If I say go to 900 megahertz it's going to go to the closest multiple of 30.72. So you see that it can be used to, used to help uh, correct the frequencies. If I go to say 1200 megahertz, 1228.8. Notice that for the integrated VCOs it actually adjusts the VCO uh, tuning gang as a function of frequency. So now we have that. Uh, let's talk about some of the other things, uh, particularly what's going to affect my uh, loop filter. In my loop filter we have the Bode plot, which we'll talk about in the simulation. This tells me about the parameters of my loop filter. And we also have this other button, the design a loop filter, so this is what I use to design. You can see the order of the loop filter I can set up here. In this particular case, it's a partially integrated loop filter, so there is no option for a second and third order loop filter, but on other parts that don't have a partially integrated loop filter is that option. We have a zero hertz, an infinite loop bandwidth and brick wall. Those things are not things you design for. Those are actually used for simulation purposes, so let's just keep that at a fourth order. Now some of the other things that influence uh, loop filter design is one is the charge pump gain. If I change this charge pump gain then it affects the loop filter design and to keep the same loop bandwidth and phase margin and property I really need to redesign the loop filter. If I change the end divider value which is here or which is the product of this one and this one, if I change any of those substantially then that affects the loop properties and typically I need to redesign my loop filter for that. So in general when you design a loop filter it's specific for a given charge pump gain and this feedback divide in this case say 20 times 2 is 40. So once you've got all the frequencies all set up then what you do is okay we've selected the order now we go to the design button and the beauty of this thing is if you didn't change any frequencies going into that it already recommends and designs a value. If you've changed any frequencies then you need to hit the recommend design and calculate. So in this case I had changed everything back to the way it was when it came so it doesn't change. But the recommend design and calculate is automatically run. The criteria it uses is it chooses a 7 degrees phase margin and it chooses the loop bandwidth such that the VCO and the PLL noise cross at that frequency or I think it might be about 20 percent higher than that. So it's, it's trying to design for the optimal RMS phase error or some people call it jitter. Uh, it does not account for spurs though. But there's reasons why you might want to tweak this a little bit. If you go to the advanced mode you can see that we have a partially integrated loop filter components. You can change that. For instance, sometimes you say I want to get more attenuation far out. You can crank this up to some higher value. Now you notice here I have a calculate and I have recommend design and calculate. In this case recommend design is going to pick all these things for you. If I say calculate I'm going to say no. I want to design for specifically this. I say calculate. Now you notice in this case I said I'm designing for 70 degrees phase margin I get 71 and I say 50 kilohertz loop bandwidth and I got 1.5 so that's way off and the reason it's way off is because I can't achieve that loop bandwidth with such large integrated loop filter values. So if I was to tune it back down turn it to lower resistors and then say calculate now I can get something closer. Now the reason that these aren't exactly the same is because we are rounding off components to standard values. If I didn't round them off I would be exactly correct. 
So that's the difference between the achieved value and the actual value. So that's pretty much that. Now also, if there's any questions that what you're really designing for, you can always go to Bodyplot and you'll see that the parameters we have loop loop bandwidth 48.01 it agrees phase margin it agrees so that concludes this video on the loop filter design stay tuned for the next video where we talk about the simulation